Good morning. It's Friday, uh, July the 10th. Is it the 10th? I think it's the 10th. Uh, welcome to today's Daily Devo. My name is Pastor Jonathan Hart with Robert Stell United Methodist Church. And uh, the reason we do these Daily Devos is to just keep in touch, to just stay connected. Uh, as a chance for me to check in with you, uh, as a way for us to connect in whatever way we're able to, and uh, continue to foster our relationship with God and one another, and to continue to develop our faith. Uh, and ask ourselves as followers of Jesus, as children of God, uh, what He is continuing to do in our midst during this very uh, strange and unprecedented season that we're in. And one of the topics that I've been thinking about lately a lot uh, is the topic of struggling and suffering. Go figure. I don't know why I've been thinking about that lately. Uh, But the reality is struggling and suffering uh, is at the core of what our faith tells us uh, lies at the heart of of human existence, what it means to live the human life and have the human experience. Um, That life is going to be full of struggling and suffering, that part of what it means to be the people of God is to be a struggling people. Uh, And that somehow through the struggling, that is the process through which God actually brings transformation. So when I think of struggling and suffering, um, can you think of the, the one main character in the Bible that comes to mind? I'm, I'm sure many of you thought Jesus, right? Uh, and, and of course, that's right. Jesus was the suffering servant. Uh, he certainly uh, endured uh, what he did, uh, taking all of the sin and pain of humanity on himself. But, but I'm thinking of just an ordinary human character in the Bible. And that character is Job. Job. Uh, Job is the poster child in the Bible of what it truly means to struggle and suffer and really have no idea what's going on or why. Uh, Job is, is that story uh, of a man on this side of the veil uh, being affected by things on the other side of the veil and having no idea uh, why certain results are, are visiting him uh, upon his life. And so I was looking at the end of Job's story and thinking about the conversation that he had with his friends through his suffering and how they tried to counsel him and just really got off track. And then how he cried out to the Lord and then how the Lord responded at the very end of the book of Job. Uh, and what strikes me about Job is Job is full of questions. Isn't that the response that we often have in the midst of suffering and struggling? We have lots of questions. And the amazing thing about the book of Job is that when God comes, God actually doesn't address any of Job's questions. In fact, God has questions of his own. But God's questions are questions like, uh, I'm sorry, where were you when I put the sky in place? Uh, You tell me. Uh, how the mountains are formed and where the seas are held back and where they are let go. You tell me uh, how these effects of nature operate and work and and how it all began. You tell me where you were uh, when the lightning was thrown to the earth. Those kinds of poetic, uh, natural kind of things. And, And in a sense, what God is really saying to Job is, I am God and you are not. And the only opportunity you have uh, is not the opportunity to get all your questions answered, but to trust me. And it's amazing to see Job's response because when Job encounters the Lord, he says, I have heard about you, but now I have seen you. I have seen you. Uh, and I am unworthy. He falls down and he begins to worship. And so his response to God coming and meeting him at his place of suffering and struggling is worship. But it's not because he got all his questions answered. It's because he encountered the one true living God. Uh, And he realized my perspective is very limited. God's perspective is not. So why would I not trust him when he can see the big picture and I can't? Um, Many uh, scholars believe that Job is actually the oldest written book of the Bible. Uh, It's not at the beginning of the Bible, uh, but it's one of the oldest pieces of literature ever found, uh, and it it is considered the oldest written book of the Bible. And the reason that's intriguing to me is, think about it, that means that the the author or authors of Job knew less about God than in any other book of the Bible. Think about that. They knew less about God because God revealed himself throughout human history in a progressive form, right? He came to a man named Abraham. Abraham had never met God. God introduced himself. 
Uh, and then he told Abraham that he was going to get to know his children, that he was going to make him into a great nation. And, and God began to get to know his people. He, he spoke to them through Moses and then eventually through the judges and the prophets. And he developed a relationship with his people that ultimately culminated in the person of Jesus. And the New Testament tells us that all of the uh, invisible uh, attributes of God were made visible in the person of Jesus. Now God has been fully revealed in human form, but... That still doesn't mean all our questions have been answered. And then when Jesus left, God poured his Holy Spirit out upon all uh, who would receive him, young and old, men and women. And uh, the church became the body of Christ on the earth. God continues to indwell us and move through us. And so we know more about God today than we ever have. We actually have the presence of God in and with us like never before. Uh, and God has revealed himself today more uh, than ever in, in human history. Um, we also know more about the world in which we live. We know more about the universe. We have more scientific answers. We've, we've discovered more things than ever before. And yet still, look what one virus is doing to our world. Look what one virus is doing to our society, is challenging our faith and testing us. Uh, look what's happening and as we, as we know more about God and as we know more about the world and the universe in which we live, we are still dwarfed by the unanswered questions that we have. And here's what God spoke to me through all of this today. The answer is still my presence. The answer is still my presence. When he came to Job, he didn't answer all his questions. When God sent his son Jesus uh, to reveal himself to humanity, he didn't answer all our questions. In fact, he, many times he would speak in parables and riddles and have to explain to his disciples what he meant. He didn't come just to answer all our questions. He came because the presence of God trumps all our questions. And when we're asking our questions, we think we want answers. What we really want is to know God and to be known by him because that's what we were created for. And all our questions are in some form a manifestation of that longing of our souls. So I want to invite you today to be encouraged and to receive peace knowing this. God offers you himself, his presence, his love today. I want you to think about what anxieties or worries you might have. I want you to think about what unanswered questions maybe you've been dwelling upon, especially uh, if you're encountering specific forms of struggling or suffering right now. Uh, what challenges are you going through? What's got you discouraged and down? And I want you to receive the presence of God today as he offers himself to you. If it helps, imagine him actually in the room. Imagine a quiet, peaceful uh, figure in the room with you, longing to comfort you, longing to speak to you. Listen for his voice. What would he say? What is he saying? Uh, what is the person of Jesus trying to communicate to you? What is the, the sweet counselor, the helper, the Holy Spirit trying to speak to your soul today? How is he trying to offer you himself? Maybe he's not trying to say anything at all. He just wants you to know he's there. And that makes all the difference. Focus on God's presence today. I challenge you just to spend a few minutes alone with him. Spend a few minutes in prayer and let him minister to your soul in whatever way you need. I don't know, but he does. Would you let him? This is Pastor Jonathan with Robert Still UMC. God bless you on this beautiful Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you back Sunday morning at 10 a.m. right here on our Facebook page for Worship Live. Until then, grace and peace.